Hi everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. Today we're at Holmes Honda to take a look at the 2024 Honda HRV EXL and see if it's worth the sticker price of $30,445. If you plan on buying one of these HRV EXLs, a 2024 model or even a 2023, tell me what the sticker price is in the area where you live or where you have looked. The exterior color on this model is called Milano Red it has a black interior. Tell me what you think. Would you like to see several more interior color options available than what you can currently have for the HRV? One thing's for sure. This is a fun little SUV to drive. It's based on the same platform as the 11th generation or the 2022 and forward Honda Civic. And it's very nimble. It has a reasonable amount of cargo space for its class. Let's dig in a little bit deeper and see exactly what you get for the sticker price. One of the most interesting experiences I had personally with the HRV about a year ago, it was on July 4th weekend, I was able to take one home that weekend. A lot of people didn't know what it was. They were very interested because they liked the way it looked. It definitely looked different. Of course, it was new at the time. Now we're into the second year of the second generation. And what are you going to find? LED headlights. LED daytime running lights. It has some gloss black here on the front end. As you can see, a nicely sized grill. I'm gonna obviously have the Honda logo up there. And to help improve gas mileage, you're going to have the front air curtains. Let me show you where this comes out right here. It goes through the front end and comes out right here, just in case anybody says that isn't really an air curtain, which believe me, that kind of thing does happen. You do have Honda sensing here. So you're gonna have your lane keeping assist, road departure mitigation, traffic jam assist, all of that's going to be there. And depending on what your desires are, front wheel drive is standard on all three trim levels. And you can also option in all wheel drive. Speaking of that, what about tire and wheel size? In this particular situation, we have 215 on the width, a 60 series sidewall, and the rim size is 17 inches. We'll continue on up here to the body colored mirror caps. Yes, the turn signal indicators are built into the power adjustable manually folding side view mirrors. And for those who always want to know about remote start, there is your answer on the remote. Yes, it is there. That's a good thing. It is a proximity key. All that good stuff is there and very nice lines across the entirety of the vehicle. We'll finish things off with the rear roof spoiler or the tailgate spoiler, depending on which you wish to use. And LED taillights finish things off here on the rear, a very nice look. And because I goofed and forgot to mention it, yes, these side view mirrors are heated. In addition to everything I already told you about, the base price for the 2024 model of the HRV is $24,100. And across the board on all trim levels, you're going to find the two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder. For those of you who do not like turbocharged engines, this is a good option for you. It makes 158 horsepower, 138 on the torque. It is mated to a well-behaved continuously variable transmission or CVT. And how about those all important MPGs? Here's the advantage to the motor and the horsepower numbers, 25 city, 30 highway, 27 combined and 3.7 gallons of gas. It's what Honda says you should use per every 100 miles you drive. And you do have a lockable gas door with capless fuel fill. Let me show you real fast here. Lock the interior and the gas door is locked. I've unlocked the interior, now it's unlocked again. And that gives you access to a 14 gallon gas tank. One thing that hasn't changed at least very much is cargo capacity, 24 to 55 cubic feet. And as you saw, I think you saw it right there on the rear window. Yes, this is an all wheel drive model. And one big advantage here, let's see if I can show you. You don't have to worry about a tire repair kit. There is the spare tire. That's always a big benefit and cargo lighting in this rear area to help make things easy to see after dark. You also have the 12 volt power outlet back here and maximizing cargo capacity is super easy to do. All you're going to do is come right here 
pull on the release and you can lower both sides of the seat. They do fold flat. I like the fact that they don't have a steep angle to them. That makes it a little bit easier to take more advantage of the cargo capacity that is available here. Now, one thing that I wish Honda had left was the magic rear seats. Unfortunately, that isn't here anymore. I know a lot of you would like to see that. Tell Honda down in the comments if they should add back in the magic rear seats. It was a very popular option or feature, I should say, because it was standard on all trim levels for the first version or the first generation of the HRV. Okay, we're gonna take a look in through the rear door into the back seat area. Comfortable armrest. This is how you test for the softness of the armrest. Poking it like that as if you're testing to see how done your steak is just doesn't quite cut it. Contrast stitching will be found here and a large bottle holder. I don't know if I'd call that so much of a door bin as a bottle holder, but it could be used as a multitasker. You could put other things than bottles or cups or whatever in there. And a reasonable amount of space here within the interior in the back seat area. Let me sit straight up and show you. I have a decent amount of head space right there at five foot 10. So that should give you a good idea for rear seat passengers. You do have the rear seat pocket here and a little more space here. That's really about all I can show you on the rear of the center console. No USB connectivity options or air conditioning vents. In an interior of this size, I don't know that that's that big of a deal as far as the airflow goes, but it would be nice to see air conditioning vents back here. One way you can tell how well a vehicle is made is to open and close the doors. These doors feel very solid and you can hear that it's a well-made vehicle as well. It doesn't feel cheap when you close the doors. It doesn't have that cheap sound. You really need to likely do that for yourself to understand what I'm saying, but I'm sure you get the idea. And a little more space here, more of a door bin than just a cup holder or bottle holder in this particular case. You have space for a bottle right there, but more space in the rear. Now you're gonna find a power driver's seat, but a manually adjustable passenger seat. Nice looking seats, by the way, have a nice sporty look to them. And as I said, the interior or the whole platform here is largely based on the 11th generation of the Civic. You can see that as we look across the dashboard, you're going to have a nice large glove box here, plenty of space. Just put my hand in there to give you a little bit of a reference. And here's one thing that is an option, although you'd have to run a long cable, you could run a cable back to your rear seat passengers with an adapter from this USB port to give them USB connectivity. Just something to consider. Also have the wireless charging pad right there, the cup holders, and the conventional style shifter. For those of you who are not fans of the push button shifter, well, good news, you don't have to worry about that. And we have our drive mode selector, our hill start assist, button right there to use that feature, power parking brake and brake hold mode. And one thing that I do like here, you don't have just the lone USB option. There's actually one on each side of the pass-through right here. That's a nice little area. And then let's take a look inside of the center console. Quite a bit of space down in there. A little bit more than it may appear until you actually look inside. Take a look in through the driver's side door no surprises here as far as the differences on available functionality on the driver's side door. We're gonna have that same size door bin. And then being that this is an all wheel drive model, turning traction control off, you likely aren't going to get to do much of a burnout as you would with front wheel drive if you wanted to attempt that with your CRV. But it's there and you can drop the lever right here to adjust the tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel. So we'll get in and let you listen just to hear what you're greeted by when you hop into the interior. And here is the digital dashboard. A nice look, obviously this isn't new for 2024 because you had it for 2023 as well, but it does look nice. A lot of good functionality here and you can scroll through a lot of information depending on what you want to see. Very easy to use or very easy to figure out if this is something that is brand new to you, especially the technology. You're gonna control the blinkers. If you've ever wondered what that lever was for, well, that's how you let people around you know what you're doing when you're turning or changing lanes. And then you can also control the functionality of the headlights and the taillights right there. Here is the control for your front and rear window wipers. And then obviously we have push button start here 
And here is our nine inch touch screen. And as you can see, I've paired my phone. You do have wireless capabilities to pair your phone. You don't need a USB cable to do that for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Now I'll go back to the main screen just to show you what exactly is here. A very simple system to use. Once you're paired onto Apple CarPlay, if it doesn't come up automatically, which it should, all you have to do is push the option right there and there you go. Pretty simple to use. I like that. Vehicle settings, let's go in and take a look at what that looks like. Nice graphics, easy to figure out what it is you need to find depending on what you want to do. We'll go back home one more time, look through what else is here just to show you. And obviously you don't have navigation built in. You do have the built in compass right here, but you know, that's not a big deal because you can pair your smartphone and then use your favorite navigation app on your phone. And let me go into reverse. I'll show you the multi-view rear view camera. It's nothing real fancy, but you know, at this price point, it's not bad. You do have the multi-view rear view camera with three different views. That helps out a lot. I think that fits the vehicle quite well. And as you can see, we do have our dual zone climate control right here. Heated seats only, something we're not going to need here in Northwest Louisiana for the foreseeable future. And earlier I showed you your mode selector, your drive mode selector. So let's go through those drive modes. So we're gonna start here. We have normal, we have econ, and we have snow. Now you'll notice that sport is not there, but that doesn't mean that it isn't actually here because you can see that you can go all the way back here into drive. And then you have that S back there. That is actually your sport mode in case you were wondering. Okay, now that we're on the road for our test drive with the HRV, one thing I did not mention earlier in the video, and you may have already picked up on this, but if you didn't, well, you are going to know in just a few seconds. One thing that is not here, the auto stop start system, or what is often referred to as idle stop, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to turn it off because it just isn't here. That's a big advantage. So ultimately, I really enjoy driving this HRV. They're nimble. They have great handling characteristics. Does it handle just like a Civic? Well, it handles like a Civic that's a little higher off the ground, I guess you could say. I'm not going to throw it into the corners the same way I would an 11th generation, a 22 or a 23 Civic. But one way or another, it really does handle very well. It's great for big city driving. So if you live in an area where it's highly congested and you don't need a full size SUV or a large sedan or anything like that, this is a nice vehicle because of how easy it is to get around with no matter the situation. And obviously we'll push Google Maps right there and bring that up just so you can see what that looks like on the screen. Uh, you will have to turn on location services for that to show you on the screen right there. But just in case you were curious about how that looked, well, that, now you know if I can keep from being tongue twisted. Technology here is very easy to learn and use. That's one thing I really enjoy about all of these Honda vehicles, whether they're from four or five years ago or 23 or 24 models, they definitely do a very good job. And for those of you who might complain and say, 158 horsepower isn't enough. There's likely a reason why we're doing eight miles per hour under the speed limit right now with this F-150 in front of us because that particular model of the F-150 probably makes about the same amount of horsepower or less than does this HRV. That's probably why you can't get to 50 miles per hour. Okay, sorry. I have to say something sarcastic when things like that happen. So what is my ultimate verdict? Well, if you're looking for something along the lines of the HRV, and look, his blinkers are broken too. This is definitely a great vehicle to drive. It gets around with no problem. It's fun to drive. It saves a lot of gas. There's a big advantage to not having an overload of horsepower where that's concerned. If you're looking for something that's going to be good on gas and you don't have to fill it up, but well, depending on how much you drive, maybe once a week. That's always an advantage, always a benefit. It's easy to see out of. No blind spot monitoring is not here, just in case you were curious about that. But that knocks $550 off of the price. Wow, we're going downhill, so the F-150 up there is going a little faster. Okay, sorry, I shouldn't get distracted by things. That's not a squirrel driving down the road, is it? But for the money, you do get quite a bit here. With all the different safety features, Honda sensing and 
all the good things that you have. Your screen right here is one thing I like here about that is the fact that it's at a 90 degree angle. So that means it's not inset into the dashboard the way that it was with the first generation of the HRV. So you're not going to deal with the same issues of glare as you would have in the past. Now, one thing I am always curious to know about, obviously I have the camera mounted to the sunroof. It's a conventional size sunroof. Would you like to see Honda offer a panoramic sunroof instead of the conventional size? And if you're curious, well, what is your thought on that, Tom? Personally, I don't want a sunroof at all, but that's just me. And as far as the main features go, that's what you get for a sticker price of $30,445 with the 2024 version of the Honda HRV EXL. Tell me what you think about that. Is it worth the price? And tell me why you answered the way that you did. I'm curious to get your feedback. I have to say a special thanks to my friends here at Holmes Honda for loaning me this 24 HRV for the day. There is a link down in the description of the video if you're interested to know more and maybe come in and buy this HRV. Tell whoever you talk to that Tom from Vehicle Visionary sent you their way. And I want to say a special thanks to each and every one of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video and would like to learn about other vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now and I will see you there.